spoilers abound. The most memorable part of Utobareru Mono is the whiplash I got from how quickly it tends to escalate or otherwise change. It opens with the mysterious main character waking up in a small village with no memory of his past life, and without skipping a beat, a few episodes later he's headed a successful rebellion and become the emperor of his country. It's easy to look back on this series of events and think, whoa, a whole lot happened very fast there, and perhaps the show did rush through those events too quickly. What I found to be remarkable about those episodes was how natural those events seemed. Sure, on reflection, it seems fast, and even while watching, I noticed that things were happening very fast, but it managed to hold itself together because, in the moment, everything that happened felt like a natural progression, and because the moment-to-moment -moment pacing didn't feel jarring, it had room to be engaging. All of what I just talked about I'll call a narrative whiplash that more or less was to the show's benefit. It started as a calm story about life in a village and quickly escalated into a war story, thus the whiplash, without ever feeling like it was getting too out of hand with its storytelling, without departing too far from established expectations. Unfortunately, Utowareru Mono also contains a hefty narrative whiplash that's not so beneficial. So up until episode 19, everything's a straightforward medieval-ish war drama, and it grounds itself firmly in a world with swords and bows and little else. Then, in the last six episodes, it turns out that... This other country has fucking Ava units out of nowhere because this one guy helped them to build them and that guy maybe has been behind a lot of the wars that have been happening in the show and it turns out that this world is actually a post-apocalypse where years ago humanity couldn't live on the surface for some reason so they created new people, the descendants of whom are now the cast of the show, but how they made these people or where it gets really weird because apparently they made them by experimenting on some ancient godlike entity they just dug up and it turns out this godlike entity split in two at some point one half became the guy who made the Ava units and the other half became our main character and it's the main character specifically who's probably the father of all the people alive now and the two halves are destined to fight one another in some weird magic ritual has to be performed to seal the two together what the fuck is going on Oh, those last six episodes represent a bad narrative whiplash because they feel completely divorced from the show that preceded them, whereas the first few episodes, while fast-paced, felt like a natural progression of events, the last six episodes felt like I was watching a completely different show. The random science fiction and mystical elements are completely at odds with the solid medieval world that had been built up over the course of 19 episodes without a hint of either of those things. Alright, hang on, I'm gonna have to interrupt myself here while editing and skimming through the footage to put up the video. I discovered a character uh, casting a ball of magic attack at some people during an episode before uh, the show goes off the rails, and I realized that uh, I didn't blink at this, so what I'm saying here is not that uh, magic has no place in the show, but that uh, the extreme degree- it doesn't have that big of a presence beforehand, and when it's taken to the extreme degree, messed with all the science fiction elements, it just seems really wonky, you know? Okay, back to the- back to the scripted content. It's a real shame because, aside from that train wreck of a closing arc, the rest of the show is a pretty fun war drama with some good fight animation sprinkled in here and there. The characters, too, I usually enjoyed. They've all got a bunch of cool designs and usually have fleshed out personal histories to make them more relatable and believable. Sometimes the show even slows down to explore an antagonist's views and motivations, making it easier to view them as flawed people with their own perspectives, as opposed to bad guys who just need to be defeated. But not always. It, it does have its share of those bad guys who are just bad and then they die. So yeah, I guess in that sense, uh, villains are about as consistent as the show's narrative. So overall... I'm sad. Utowareru Mono was so close to being easily recommendable, but man, those last six episodes are something else. I could recommend that you watch the first 19 episodes easily enough, though. Those are pretty good. As for what comes after, though, don't. I suppose if you really want to witness the spectacle of a show completely derailing itself, go right ahead, but otherwise, nah. Thanks for watching day six of 31 days of anime 2017. Today was number 26, Utawareru Mono! Join me tomorrow for number 25, the new favorite show of everyone else in the world that I thought was just okay. In the meantime, if you want to check out my other stuff, you can, though, why you'd want to do that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.